Hey everybody, welcome to Found Flicks. On this inning explain, we'll be looking at one you guys have been wanting me to do for a while. 2007's Dead Silence, a ghost story of sorts featuring the violent spirit of a ventriloquist Mary Shaw and her many dolls that terrorize a small town. This movie is an odd duck to me for a number of reasons, not just because of the possessed creepy dolls aspect of the story, which is unavoidably kind of goofy, but even more odd is that it hails from the same duo behind the Saw and Insidious series, writer Lee Winnell and director James Wan. Unlike most of their films, Dead Silence feels quite a bit sillier by design than usual from these guys, and wisely doesn't always take itself too seriously, like the wisecracking, always shaving detective played by Donnie Wahlberg. Why did you bury me, Jamie? It's just goofy, in a charming kind of way. Though it was intended to start its own franchise, Dead Silence was a rare miss at the box office for the duo, and in retrospect compared to their other works, it feels like a strange diversion for the two that doesn't always quite work, but is executed much better than would typically be expected from this kind of movie, showing if not perfect, these guys definitely have some talent and creativity to spare, even with a spooky doll movie. So let's check out Dead Silence, breaking down the main story, including the backstory of our main villain Mary Shaw, and explaining the ending that includes one huge and ridiculous final twist. We open on a rainy night at the apartment of husband and expecting wife Lisa and Jamie, first seen failing to fix the sink and as a husband, leaving his starving pregnant wife waiting for him to prepare a special dinner while he messes with the pipes. After suggesting takeout instead, a knock at the door brings them an unexpected package. Inside is an intricate mannequin doll in a suit called Billy. No relation to Billy from Saw, but he does make a cameo later. While it does look a little bit creepy, it's just a mysterious random doll, right? Nothing to be alarmed about. Or perhaps there is. Lisa remembering a legend from their hometown about the woman Mary Shaw and her many dolls. Beware the stare of Mary Shaw. She had no children, only dolls. And if you see her in your dreams, make sure you never scream. Scream, or she'll rip your tongue out at the scene. Basically, if you see her spirit, do not scream or she'll rip your tongue out. It's not just legend though, as Lisa learns. When Jamie heads out to get the food, hiding the doll under a sheet to scare her husband. But then strangely, time slows to a crawl and all sound suddenly leaves the environment, creating, you guessed it, dead silence. Each time before Mary attacks, this same bending of time and sound occurs. The doll coming to life and attacking Lisa. She tries to crawl away, coughing up blood, but is dragged back into the room by the spirit. Since Mary was a ventriloquist, one of her abilities is to mimic the voice of her victims, as seen when Jamie returns home, hearing his dead wife calling out to him, where he discovers her body with her tongue cut out in a horrific sight. Since there's no evidence of the puppet killing her, grizzled detective Lipton points the finger at Jamie for murdering his wife, but lets him go for now, keeping a watchful eye on him. Determined to prove that the puppet killed his wife, Jamie returns to the apartment finding it still sitting on the floor, and after tearing open the lining of its case, sees an old carnival style ad for Mary Shaw in Billy's ventriloquist act in his hometown of Raven's Fair. Dummy in tow, he heads back home, finding things there in a pretty bad state, greeted by storefronts all gone out of business, as if the town has been cursed somehow. It has. Returning to the stately manor of his childhood home, he is greeted by his father's new wife, the lovely Ella, revealing that Jamie's once hard-nosed and mean-spirited father has changed after suffering a stroke two months ago. Jamie isn't buying it, dredging up what a terrible father he's been and always pushing him away, and tries to ask about the legend of Mary Shaw, which Ella quickly brushes off as just a ghost story, though Jamie continues believing there's more to it than that. And back at the hotel, he experiences this for himself, when the neon light begins to rhythmically blink and the sound escapes the room, the doll's eyes beginning to turn to face him. In bed, Jamie he comes to, seeing Billy standing there waiting for him and quickly disappears, catching then a glimpse of the spirit of Mary in the corner lunging for him. But phew, it was just a dream. After Lisa's burial, Jamie goes for a stroll in the woods, running into Marion, the seemingly disturbed wife of Henry that runs the local funeral hall. She appears to have some kind of connection to the dead and has been talking to Mary's spirit, and knowing she's dangerous, demands that Jamie bury the doll. At the cemetery, he unearths his little doll coffin, putting Billy inside but he doesn't stay buried too long. At the hotel, finding Billy there, dug up by Detective Lipton, believing Jamie was burying the doll as its evidence to cover up something related to killing his wife, still not believing anything supernatural to be going on. He takes Billy with him, but the next day just leaves it in his open room, and Jamie easily reclaims it, taking it to the funeral home, where Henry is shocked to see it 
gravely stating that he shouldn't have that. It's hers. When Jamie says Mary's name, fear immediately shoots through Henry, warning they don't even say her name around here. They, like everyone else in the town, have tried to deny the legend to be true, and thus they pretend it never happened. That didn't work out too well, though. After some prodding, Henry opens up about back in the glory days of Raven's Fair, detailing his own experience as a child with the original show performed by Mary and Billy at an opulent theater on the town's lake. To a packed house, the two perform their not exactly thrilling ventriloquist routine, though through their chatter back and forth, it becomes clear that the effect is a little too real, as though Billy is in fact alive, and not being manipulated or controlled by Mary. And when one child in the crowd heckles them, claiming he can see her lips move, Billy becomes incensed, yelling that he's just as real as he is, which the crowd reacts to by bursting into applause for some reason. Mary continues to stare dagger-eyed at the boy, Henry revealing he went missing a few weeks later. Not long after this, Mary was murdered and buried with her collection of dolls, which she treated as children. All 101 of them! Woo-wee! That's a lot of tiny coffins! Henry's father did her embalming, where she had another strange request in her will, to be made up to resemble a doll herself. Sure, why not? And it seems soon after her spirit return, appearing to Henry alive and grotesque in the basement where her body was being worked on. He goes on that ever since her burial, the town has been plagued by death, many families murdered around the area, all with their tongues ripped out and staged in disturbing family portraits, knowing she won't ever stop killing until the screaming does. Remembering him mentioning that she lived at the theater, Jamie decides to head there to investigate, arriving at the dilapidated and cool-looking ruins of the theater, sunken partially into the lake. Making his way across the rickety rafters, he finds himself in Mary's old room, discovering her sketchbook of doll designs and one marked the perfect doll. Then coming to newspaper clippings tied to the missing kid, Jamie realizing he has a connection to the boy Michael that heckled Mary and was presumably killed by her, who it turns out is his great uncle or something. Once again, the sound is sucked away, leaving only Jamie's shallow breathing behind, catching the sight of a bloodied Mary in the mirror, and wisely decides to get the heck out of there. While back at the funeral home, it appears that Marion is talking to Billy, again concerning her husband, later hearing a shaky voice weeping in their house's crawl space, assuming it's his wife as usual. But not this time, first hearing the doll telling him hello, followed by Mary, who appears from the dark, giggling, and kills him in her standard tongue-snatching fashion. In the unrated version, seeing how it is she takes her victim's voice, Voices. A huge, monstrously long tongue coming from her mouth and actually attaching the one she freshly pulled from Henry onto her own. Well, that's one way to do it. Jamie confronts his father about the missing boy Michael, learning from him that there was an extra layer to the story behind Mary's death. After Michael went missing, the only suspect was Mary, and without any evidence, the town banded together into a mob, taking justice into their own hands and killing her for her supposed crime. He laments that she didn't stay dead, however, and soon returned. And saw revenge against those that played a part in her murder, one by one killing each of the members of the families responsible, her revenge continuing on into further generations and into today. This is why Lisa was targeted by her. She was pregnant with the next generation in the lineage through Jamie and his father. And after hearing this, Jamie understands that he is paying for the sins of his fathers and the mistakes of prior generations. About to leave, he runs into Lipton, asking about the missing Billy and filling him in that someone, him, unearthed the other 100 of Mary Mary's doll children, intending to finally arrest Jamie until he gives him something better than a ghost story. But he's saved by a well-timed phone call, seemingly from Henry, his voice crackling over the line telling Jamie he has a way to prove his innocence, and to find out he must return to the theater. As he is very dead, this is Mary once again using her ventriloquist powers to mimic his voice, doing so once again when Jamie arrives at the theater, luring him back to her old room. There, instead of finding Henry, Lipton appears wielding a shotgun, the two descending further into the theater, coming to Mary's large doll-making area. Lipton comes across a doll on the ground, dismissively tossing it away, hitting a curtain that falls, revealing a massive display case to house all 101 of her dolls, who have all been brought here after being dug up by Lipton. Except for the still-at-large Billy Boy. They come across something else shrouded in a red sheet, finding Jamie's long-missing relative Michael's body underneath, attached to strings to act as a rudimentary human puppet. The sound suddenly goes quiet, Jamie noting this is how it starts, as one by one each of the dolls come to life, creakily turning their heads towards something. Jamie approaches another doll sitting in a chair. Amongst the pieces strewn around is Billy from Saw, just chillin'. In the chair is 
is another clown doll that has been possessed by Mary. Jamie yelling out her name to her, her calling him clever for realizing her trick. When asking about Michael, she then complains of the difficulty of constructing the perfect doll, admitting that sometimes you have to use other human parts. She tells Jamie she has a secret for him, getting right up to the clown's face saying that he wasn't the last of his family. His unborn child, which he didn't know about, was. Responding in Lisa's voice, two ghostly white hands clutch the doll from behind, lifting it into the air. Lipton takes a shot, blowing the doll to pieces, and Mary makes her way through the other dolls, her possessing them evidenced by seeing her weird, distorted CG face coming out of them as she passes through. Jamie then realizing they have to destroy them all. He catches the display on fire and runs away, pursued by Mary's spirit floating after them. On the way out, they lose their footing, Lipton falling through the air, caught by Mary's spirit who ejects him back from behind the curtain, dead and tongue gone. His precious electric shaver buzzing ever onwards next to Lipton's body. Poor bastard couldn't even get a final shave in before being killed. Turning to Jamie, he falls through the theater floor, into the river below, swimming through a sea of mannequins and coming to the surface on the other side, turning to the theater engulfed in flames in the distance behind him. But he remembers his job isn't quite done as Billy is still intact and goes to the funeral home in search of the doll. There he finds the aftermath of Henry's encounter with Mary, dead in a distraught Marion's arms. Jamie asks where the doll is, and she says it was his father that took him. Jamie is in disbelief as his father is wheelchair bound and never leaves the house, but she maintains that he took Billy. What else to do but find out for himself what's going on? Going to his family home one last time where he'll get a bigger surprise than any of us could possibly expect. Searching the dark and stormy house for his father, he finds Billy in a baby's crib, and Mary quickly manifests attacking him. But Jamie tosses the doll into the fire, causing Mary pain, and the sound in the room returns to normal. Well, I guess with that, it's all over, right? <laughs> right? Not so fast, my friends, as we have one final ridiculous twist, made a thousand times more melodramatic thanks to the score by the same guy that did the Saw series, Charlie Clouser. You know how in those movies there were always the big twist, and they show you all this footage in a new light that totally blows your mind? That's kind of the same thing going on here, but much more bizarre and, as usual, frankly silly. <laughs> The lightning reveals his father sitting motionless in the room. Jamie, upon further inspection, seeing the entirety of the back half of his body has been removed. Flashing back to their previous interactions from a new perspective, seeing that Ella was actually controlling his father like a puppet each time, thanks to his hollowed out corpse, even creating a tube of sorts to be able to feed him soup. Mmm, elaborate. This reveals to us that this whole time, Ella was actually a previously unknown doll created by Mary, who she had been possessing like the others. Indeed. Ella is her previously referenced perfect doll, which resembles a human to the degree of not being able to tell the difference, as poor Jamie now understands. Ella turning on him, seeing Mary's face flash over hers. He screams in terror, allowing Mary to kill him too. And from what we can tell, she has completed her mission. I'm not sure how many of the other families are still around, but at the very least, the Ashen family is no more thanks to Jamie's death. Though I have a feeling Mary will keep on killing regardless, even if she does technically have her revenge at this point and still has one more doll with Ella that she can continue to use to enact her deadly desires, which must have been the direction they were considering for sequels. Guess we'll never know for sure. So this acts as the complete story for Mary and her many children, evil winning out in the end. With that, we have reached the conclusion of this ending explained on Dead Silence. Thanks for all the requests for this one, guys. And if you sent me a request before that I haven't done yet, be patient. I promise I will get to all of them. And make sure to send me requests for any movie or TV shows you'd like to see me explain by sending them my way on any of my social media accounts at Foundflix. What did you guys think of Dead Silence and its ending? What is your favorite scary doll movie of all time? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Make sure to like, subscribe, and follow. Thanks for watching Foundflix. See you next time.